Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I'm going to say our customary blessing. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Lord our God, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we and our offspring and the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and say your for Torah. Your Torah, for the sake of fulfilling your desire, blessed are you, Lord, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Blessed are you, Lord, o our God, King of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the Torah. May the Lord bless you and keep watch over you. May the Lord be make his presence who lighten you may be kind to you. May the Lord bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's portion is Genesis 44 18 through 47 27 in this week's read is I cannot pronounce that but it means he drew near yeah that's just silly but I know I'm a budget so I'm not gonna try then Judah went up to him and said oh my lord please let your servant speak a word in my Lord's ears, and let not your anger burn against your servant, for you are like Pharaoh himself. My Lord asked his servant, saying, Have you a father or a brother? And we said to the Lord, We have a father, an old man, and a young brother, the child of his old age. His brother is dead, and he alone is left of his mother's children, and his father loves him. Then you said to your servants, Bring him down to me, that I may set my eyes on him. We said to my Lord, The boy cannot leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father would die. Then you said to your servants, Unless your youngest brother comes down with you, you shall not see my face again. When we went back to your servant, my father, we told him the words of my Lord. And when our father said, Go ahead, buy us a little food, we said, We cannot go down. If our youngest brother goes with us, then we will go down. For we cannot see the man's face unless our youngest brother is with us. Then your servant, my father, said to us, You know that my wife bore me two sons. One left me, and I said, Surely he has been torn to pieces, and I have never seen him since. If you take this one also from me, and harm happens to him, you will bring me down, bring my gray hairs In evil to Sheol. Now therefore, as soon as I come to your servant, my father, and the boy is not with us, then as his life is bound up in the boy's life, as soon as he sees that the boy is not with us, he will die. And your servants will bring down the gray hairs of, of your servant, our father, with sorrow to Sheol. For your servant became a pledge of safety for the boy to my father, saying, If I do not bring him back to you, then I shall bear the blame before my father all my life. Now therefore, please let your servant remain instead of the boy as a servant to my lord, and let the boy go back with his brothers. For how can I go back to my father if the boy is not with me? I fear to see the evil that would find my father. Then Joseph could not control himself before all those who stood before him. He cried, to make everyone go out from me. So no one stayed with him. Then Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud so that the Egyptians heard it. And the household of Pharaoh heard it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? And his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me, please. And they came near, and he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt, and now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For Elohim sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land for these two years, and there are yet five years, in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And Elohim sent me before you to preserve you, to preserve for you a remnant on earth and they keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but Elohim. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. 
Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, Elohim has made me a lord in all of Egypt. Come down to me. Do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me. You and your children and your children's children and your flocks and your herds and all that you have, there I will provide for you. For there are yet five years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have do not come to poverty. And now your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see, that it is my mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father of all my honor in Egypt, and of all that you have seen. Hurry, and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. After that, his brothers talked to him, with him. When the report was heard of Pharaoh's house, Joseph's brothers have come. It pleased Pharaoh and his servants. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, Say to your brothers, Do, do this. Load your beasts and go back to the land of Canaan. And take your father and your households and come to me. And I will give you the best of the land of Egypt. And you shall eat the fat of the land. And you, Joseph, are commanded to say, Do this. Take wagons from the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives. And bring your father and come. Have no concern for your goods, for the best of all the land of Egypt is yours. The sons of Israel did so, and Joseph gave them wagons according to the command of Pharaoh, and gave them provisions for the journey. To each and all of them he gave a change of clothes, but to Benjamin he gave three hundred shekels of silver and five changes of clothes. And to his father he sent as follows, ten donkeys loaded with good things of Egypt, and ten female donkeys loaded with grain, bread, and provisions for his father on the journey. And he sent away, then he sent his brothers away, and they, as they departed, he said to them, Do not quarrel on the way. So they went out of Egypt and came to the land of Canaan to their father Jacob. And they told them, Joseph is still alive. And he is ruler over all the land of Egypt, and his heart became numb, for he did not believe them. But when they told him all the words of Joseph which he had said to them, and when he saw the wagons that Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of their father Jacob revived. And Israel said, It is enough. Joseph, my son, is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. So Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices to Elohim on his father, to Elohim of his father Isaac. And Elohim spoke to Israel in visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, I am Elohim, the Elohim of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for there will, there I will make you into a great nation. I myself will go down with you to Egypt, and I will also bring you up again. And Joseph's hand shall cover your eyes, shall close your eyes. Yeah. And then Jacob set out from Beersheba, the sons of Israel, and carried Jacob their father their little ones and their wives in the wagons that Pharaoh had sent to carry him. They also took their livestock, their goods, which they had gained in the land of Canaan, and came into Egypt. Jacob and all his offspring with him, his sons and his son's sons with him, his daughter and his son's daughters, and his offspring he brought with him into Egypt. Now these are the names of the descendants of Israel who came into Egypt, Jacob and his sons Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, and the son of Reuben, Hanak, Pelu, Hezron, and Kamri. The sons of Simeon, Jimuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jashin, Zohar, Shal, the son of the Canaanite woman, the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kahath, um, Merari, the son of Judah, Er, Onan, Shalaz, Perez, Zerah. But Er and Onan died in the land of Canaan. And the sons of Perez were Hezron and Humul. The sons of Issachar, Tula, Puvul, Yab, and Shimron. The sons of Zebulun, Zered, Elon, Jahlil. These are the sons of Leah, who were born to Jacob in Padan Aram. Together with his daughter Dinah, all together his sons and daughters numbered thirty-three. 
the sons of Gad, Ziphon, Hagi, Shuni, Esbon, Iri, Arodi, and Areli. The sons of Asher, Imna, Ishva, Ishvi, Verai, with Sarah their sister. And the sons of Barai, Heber, and Mashkil. These are the sons of Zilpha who Laban gave to Leah his daughter, and these she bore to Jacob, sixteen persons. The sons of Rachel, Jacob's wife, Joseph and Benjamin, and to Joseph in the land of Egypt were born Manasseh and Ephraim, who Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, the priest of On, bore to him. The sons of Benjamin, Bela, Bashar, Ashbel, Gera, Naaman, Ehi, Rosh, Hupin, Hupin, and Ard. These are the sons of Rachel who were born to Jacob, fourteen persons in all. The son of Dan, Hushin. The sons of Naphtali, Jaz Jazil, Guni, Jezer, Shalem. And these are the sons of Belha, who, whom Laban gave to Rachel his daughter, and these she bore to Jacob, seven persons in all. All the persons belonging to Jacob who came into Egypt, who were his own descendants, not including Jacob's sons' wives, were sixty-six persons in all. And the son of Joseph, who were born to him in Egypt, were two. All the persons of the house of Jacob who came into Egypt were seventy. He had sent Judah ahead of him to Joseph to show the way before him in Goshen. And then he came to the land of Goshen. Then Joseph prepared his chariot and went up to meet Israel, his father, in Goshen. He presented himself to him and fell on his neck and wept on his neck for a good while. And Israel said to Joseph, Now let me die, since I have seen your face and know that you are still alive. Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's household, I will go up and tell Pharaoh and will stay with him. My brothers and my father's household, who are in the land of Canaan, have come to me. And the men are shepherds, for they have been keepers of livestock, and they have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have. When Pharaoh calls you and says, What is your occupation? You shall say your servants have been keepers of livestock from your youth even until now. Both we and our fathers, in order that we may dwell in the land of Goshen, for every shepherd is an abomination to the Egyptian. So Joseph went in and told Pharaoh, My father and my brothers, with their flocks and herds and all that they possess have come into the land of Canaan. Now they are now in the land of Goshen. And from among his brothers he took five men and presented them to Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to his brothers, What is your occupation? And I said to Pharaoh, Your servants are shepherds, as our fathers were. And they said to Pharaoh, We have come to sojourn in the land, for there is no pasture for your servants. Flocks for the famine is severe in the land of Canaan. And now, please let your servants dwell in the land of Goshen. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, your father and your brothers have come to you. The land of Egypt is before you. Settle your father and your brothers in the best of the land. Let them settle in the land of Goshen. And if you know any able man among you, put them in charge of my livestock. Then Joseph brought in Jacob his father and stood, bef stood him before Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Jacob, How many are the days of the years of your life? And Jacob said to Pharaoh, The days... Of the years of my sojourning are a hundred and thirty years, for evil, few in evil, have been the days of the years of my life, and they have not attained to the days of the years of my life, of the life of my fathers, in the days of their sojourning. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from the presence of Pharaoh. Then Joseph settled his father and his brothers and gave them possessions in the land of Egypt, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramesses. As Pharaoh had commanded, and Joseph provided his father, his brothers, and all his father's household with food, according to the number of their descendants, uh, dependents. There was no food in all the land, for the famine was very severe, so that the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan languished by reason of the famine. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, in exchange for the grain that they had brought, and Joseph brought the, mini, the, the money into Pharaoh's house. And when the money was all spent in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, Give us food. Why should we die before your eyes? For our money is gone. And Joseph answered, Give your livestock, and I'll give you food in exchange for your, for your livestock.
if your money is gone. So they brought their livestock to, to Joseph, and Joseph gave food in exchange for their horses, the flocks, and the herds, and the donkeys. He supplied them with food in exchange for all their livestock that year. And that, and when that year ended, they came to him the following year and said to him, We will not hide from my Lord that all of our money is spent. The herds of our livestock are my Lord's. There is nothing left in the sight of my Lord but our bodies and our land. Why should we die before your eyes? Both we and our land. Buy us in our land for food. And we will... And we with our land will be servants of Pharaoh, and give us seed that we may live and not die, and that the land may not be desolate. So Joseph brought all, bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh, for all the Egyptians sold their fields because the famine was severe on them. The land became Pharaoh's. As for the people, he made servants of them, from one end of Egypt to the other. Only the land of the priests he did not buy, for the priests had a fixed allowance from Pharaoh and lived on the allowance that Pharaoh gave them. Therefore they did not sell their land. Then Joseph said to the people, Behold, I have this day bought you and your land for Pharaoh. Now here is seed for you, and you shall sow the land. And at the harvest you shall give a fifth to Pharaoh, and four fifths shall be yours. As seed for the field, and as food for yourselves, and for the household, and as food for your little ones. And they said, You have saved our lives. May it please my Lord, we will be servants to Pharaoh. So Joseph made a statute concerning the land of Egypt, and it stands to this day, that Pharaoh should have a fifth. The land of the priests alone did not become Pharaoh's. Thus Israel settled in the land of Egypt, in the land of Goshen, and they gained possessions in it, and were fruitful, and multiplied greatly. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth, and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Hello all, and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before I get started, I must say your customary blessing. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Lord our God, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths, and in the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we and our offspring, and the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your, for study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Lord, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you... Lord our God, King of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the Torah. May the Lord bless you and keep watch over you. May the Lord make his presence to enlighten you and be kind to you. May the Lord bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today is day two, and this one will be, Ezekiel 37, 15-28. The word of Yahweh came to me. Son of man, take a stick and write it. Write on it. For Judah and the people of Israel associated with him, then take another stick and write on it. For Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel associated with him, and join them one to another into one stick, that they may become one in your hand. And when the people say to you, Will you not tell us what you mean by these? Say to them, Thus says the Lord Elohim, Behold, I am about to take the stick of Joseph that is in the hand of Ephraim and the tribes of Israel associated with him and will join with the sticks of Judah and make them one stick that they may be 
one in my hand. When the, when the sticks on which you write are in your hand before your eyes, then say to them, Thus says the Lord, Elohim, behold, I will take the people of Israel from the nations among which they have gone, and will gather them from all around, and bring, bring them to their own land. And I will make them one nation in, in the land, and one mount, and on the mountains of Israel, and as one king shall be king over them. And they shall be no longer two nations, and no longer divided into two kingdoms. They shall not defile themselves any more with their idols and their detestable things, or with any of their transgressions. But I will save them all the backs slidings in which they have sinned and will cleanse them and they shall be my people and I will be their Elohim my servant David shall be king over them and they shall all have one shepherd they shall walk in my rules and be careful to obey my statutes they shall dwell in the land that I give to my servant Jacob when you where your fathers lived they and their children and their children's children shall dwell there and David, my servant, shall be their prince forever. I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will set them in their land, and multiply them, and set my sanctuary in their midst forevermore. My dwelling place shall be with them, and I will be their Elohim. And they shall be my people. Then the nations will know that I am Yahweh, who sacrifices Yahweh, who sanctifies Israel, when my sanctuary is in their midst forevermore. Sorry about that. Um, I had some shots because I decided to put my finger into a song. Yeah. Uh, right. I didn't want to put it in there, but... It just happened to go in there. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello all, and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before I get started, I'm going to say a customary blessing. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, and commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Lord our God, swing the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people Israel. May we and our offspring and the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Lord, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the Torah. May the Lord bless you and keep watch over you. May the Lord make his presence to enlighten you may be kind to you. May the Lord bestow favor on you and grant you peace. I do believe I have figured out how to say this. It is Vaigash. And we are reading Luke 6, 9 through 16. This is the third read. Don't need that. And Yeshua said to them, I ask you, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to destroy it? After looking around at them, he said to them, stretch out your hand. And he did so. And his hand was restored. But they were filled with fury and discussed with one another what they might do to Yeshua. And these days he went out in the mountain to pray. And all night he continued in prayer to Elohim. And when day came, he called his disciples and chose from them twelve whom he named apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter, and Andrew his brother, and James, and John, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called Zealot, and Judah, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Alright, short and sweet.
Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King Universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Hello, and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before I get started, I'm going to say our customary blessings. Blessed art thou, Lord, our God, King of the Universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Lord, our God, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Lord, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you, Lord. Our God, King of the Universe, who chose us from all nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the Torah. May the Lord bless you and keep watch over you. May the Lord make his presence to enlighten you may be kind to you. May the Lord bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's reading is John 5, 1 through 47. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Yeshua went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate a pool, in Aramaic it's called Bethesda, which has five roof colonnades. In these lay a multitude of in invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been an invalid for 38 years. When Yeshua saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there a long time he said to him do you want to be healed the sick man answered him sir i have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up and when i'm going another steps down before me yeshua said to him get up take up your bed and walk and at once the man was healed and he looked and he took up his bed and walked now that day was the sabbath so the jews said to the man who had been healed it is a Sabbath. Is it not lawful for you to take up your bed? Then he answered them, The man who healed me, the man said to me, Take up your bed and walk. They asked him, Who is this man who said this to you? Take up your bed and walk. Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Yeshua had withdrawn, as there was a crowd in a place. Afterward, Yeshua found him in the temple and said to him, See, you are well. Sin no more, that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went away, and told the Jews that it was Yeshua who had healed him. And this was why the Jews were persecuting Yeshua. Because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. But Yeshua answered him, My father is working until now, and I am working. That is why the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him. Because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling Elohim his own father, making himself equal with Elohim. So Yeshua said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of His own occur, a, accord, but only what He sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, that the Son does likewise. For the Father loves the Son and shown Him all that He Himself is doing, and greater works than these will be shown Him, so that you may marvel. For as the Father raised up the dead and gives, light, gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whom He will. The Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son, just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent Him. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes Him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to light. Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming, and is now here, when a dead will hear the voice of the Son of Elohim, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has also granted the Son also to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to execute judgment, because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come out, for those who have done good to the res resurrection of life. And those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. 
I can do nothing on my own, as I hear I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. If I alone bear witness about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who bears witness about me, and I know that the testimony that he bears about me is true. You sent to, you sent to John, and he has borne witness to the truth. Not that the testimony that I receive is from man, but I say these things so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But the testimony that I have is greater than that of John. For the works that the Father has given me to has given me to accomplish the very works that I am doing. Bear witness about me that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself borne witness about me. His voice you have never heard, his form you have never seen, and you do not know and you do not have his works abiding in you, for you do not believe the one whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in him that in them you have eternal life, and it is they that bear witness about me. Yet you refuse to come to me, and you may have life. I do not receive glory from people, but I know that you do not have the love of Elohim within you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in my own name, you will receive him. How can you believe when you receive glory from one another? And do not seek the glory that comes from the only Elohim. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is no one who accuses you, Moses, of whom you have sent. Moses, of whom you have set your hope. For if you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote of me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? <laughs> Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King Universe, who gave us the Torah of truth instead of everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, O Lord, giver of the Torah. And that was the fourth read of Vaigash. Hello all, and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before I get started, I'm going to say customary blessings. Blessed art thou, Lord, our God, King Universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Lord, our God, sweeten the words of your Torah in your mouths, and in, all, and in the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we and our offspring, and the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the, for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Lord, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Bless you. Lord our God, King Universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the Torah. May the Lord bless you and keep watch over you. May the Lord make his presence to enlighten you may be kind to you. May the Lord bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's read is read 5. It is Acts 7, 13-15. And on the second Visit. Joseph made himself known to his brothers, and Joseph's family became known to Pharaoh. And Joseph sent and summoned Jacob, his father, and all his kindred, seventy-five persons in all. And Jacob went down into Egypt and died, he and our fathers. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King Universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Hello and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I'm going to say your customary blessings. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King Universe, who sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Lord our God, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people, Israel.
May we and our offspring and the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your, your Torah for, for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Lord, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the Torah. May the Lord bless you and keep watch over you. May the Lord bestow his presence. May, may the Lord make his presence enlighten you. May be kind to you. May the Lord bestow favor on you and grant you peace. And for those of you who don't know, Lord Yeshua. Yeah, so. And then Lord our God is Adonai. Hmm. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach and our being gathered together to him we ask you brothers not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed either by a spirit or a spoken word or a letter seeming to be form seeming to be frost to the effect that the day of the Lord has come, let no one deceive you in any way, that that day will not come, unless the rebellion comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction who opposes and exalts himself, and every so-called God, excuse me, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat on, in the temple of Elohim, proclaiming himself to be Elohim, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And you know that, and you know what is restraining him now, so that he may be revealed in his time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains it will do so until he is out of the way. And in the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Yeshua will kill with the breath of of his mouth and bring to nothing by appearing by the appearance of his coming the coming of lawless of the lawless one is by the activity of satan with all power and false signs and wonders and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved therefore elohim sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false in order that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth instead of everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, O Lord, giver of the Torah. I'm going to try this in Hebrew. Brukata Adonai Elohinu Malaka Lom Asher Natan Lanu Tret Emet Baishe Alom Nata Betakinu Bruk Ata Adonai Natin Ha Torah. Yeah. I probably butchered that, but I'm trying. All right.